Hello again, everybody, and welcome to a new show this year on Kingsport.com. It's You Bet Kingsport with Lee Sterling. And uh, Lee, welcome. And the first question I think everybody's asking is, who's Lee Sterling? Well, I'm going to tell you who Lee Sterling is. I'm going to tell you how I know Lee Sterling. Uh, it doesn't matter what city you go to in the United States. You could go to Boise, Idaho. You could go to, um, you know, upstate New York. You could go to Boston, Los Angeles. It doesn't matter. You're probably going to hear Lee Sterling on the radio. This guy has um, built a reputation around the country as one of the top sports handicappers in the business. Uh, he lives it. He um, branches out into all different sports. Uh, if there's an MMA card, Lee's going to tell you who to bet on that night. And, uh, you know, so I've always been, been, been captivated by what Lee does, and Lee's a local guy. He lives here in Miami. And uh, with sports betting proliferating all throughout the state here, with sports books coming to Florida in October, hopefully, um, I thought, what a great time for us to introduce You Bet King Sport uh, to the site and to the Kings Nation. So, uh, Lee, welcome to the King Sport family, so to speak. And why don't you just take a minute before we dive into the Miami-Alabama game this week and just tell everybody a little bit about you and your background and, and, and what you do actually do every day. Well, even if you're not a better, I, I think I'm going to make the, the segment interesting for you because I'm going to give you my observations and how I look at a game and being a former college quarterback. I actually grew up down here in Miami, played football when they were actually good, believe it or not, at a school called Palmer Prep at the time. Now it's called Palmer Trinity. And um, cut my teeth there. Then I went to Southwest Texas State, played there on an FCS championship team as a quarterback and a punter. And uh, even if, like I said, you don't bet games, I'm going to give you some things to look for. I'm not going to be right all the time, but um, maybe you don't have the time to sit there and watch a spring game like I did, the entire spring game of Alabama. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for an edge, and I'm going to give you some, some of my insights. I think I'm going to win more than I'm going to lose. Uh, got into it. I think this is my 28th year now. And um, I do do it all. I do even I've always done football and basketball, started doing MMA when the pandemic hit. One of the gentlemen that works for me is a former uh, amateur fighter and always did well. And, you know, trying times, desperate times, call for desperate measures. And we took it up and we started doing well. We built a following there. And uh, I also sell my picks. You can see every pick I've given my clients over the last five years on my website at Paramount Sports under recent results. These are the games that I'm personally giving and I'm giving to my clients. And I sell my picks at one other site, started last year, covers.com. They have about 40 other handicappers. And last year, uh, first year on the site, and these are some sharp guys. Some guys went to MIT, Brown, uh, Georgetown. Yeah. Uh, they're real good with numbers. And some of them also have some background in football. Uh, we we were the number one service combined college football and the NFL money one for our clients. So I'm going to do things the right way. I do use my real name. Uh, if you go to high school games, I'm out at high school games a lot of times. You'll see me uh, with blue. I'm out there with blue and Charles Fishbein standing with them. Uh, after being talking on all these shows and betting games and and working on games from usually seven in the morning, seven at night, a lot of times on a Thursday, Friday night, I like to get out there for a couple hours, just walk around and, and see some of the big prospects uh, that'll go on to Miami and some of the other state and national schools. So um, excited to be here with you and and hopefully uh, I can impart some knowledge to, to your listeners. All right. Well, you don't know this, but I did my research and I know you were number one on covers.com. And I said, without a doubt, we got to get Lee. Lee's got to be the guy. Uh, for you bet Kingsport. Um, but I got to admit that our viewers, there probably were more than a few of them that were, you know, throwing things at their screens a few minutes ago when you said you're not going to win every single game and not <laughs> right every single time. That's not what they want to hear. They want to hear that they're going to win every single bet on every game they play every week. Right. <laughs> it can't be done. Anyone telling you they're hitting 70, 80% can't be done. When I go hitting the high 50%, what I did, I hit like 58% last year. It's a great year because all you have to do is hit 52.38% to break even. So it's not easy. Um, for instance, I had 
uh, preseason game last week at Cincinnati laying one and a half. They're up by 12 with five minutes to go. And what do the Dolphins do? They proceeded to score two touchdowns and beat me. So uh, just going to have those things happen to you. All right. Well, uh, let's talk Miami, Alabama, because this game is a bit of a challenge, I think, for betters. I've been being asked about it for the whole week. And I don't really know what to tell people. I mean, the big question I'm getting is, can Miami beat the spread? Nobody, I haven't heard one person throughout the entire United States that thinks Miami's actually going to win this game. So, you know, I've seen Miami plus 18. I've seen Miami plus 19. I've seen Miami plus 20. The first question I have for you is, does it matter? Obviously, the spread does matter in this game. For Miami to win, everything would have to go right. They're probably going to have to be like plus three turnover ratio. King would probably have to go 20 for 23 or 20 for 25. Um, You know, everything that's gone wrong for Miami in some of these other games, these big games over the last decade, they'd have to go right. But I've seen crazier things happen. You know, I was at the Miami Nebraska game when they won in 83. Mm -hmm. And if they played, Nine more times. Nebraska probably wins every other time. Let's be honest. You know, so Miami had the great game plan. The thing about, that gives Miami a chance, if this game was played in week six, they really don't have a chance at all. They probably get blown out. But you have a young quarterback for Alabama and young, never started a game. He doesn't know exactly what he's going to face. Uh, if Manny Diaz is smart and – I'm not saying he's real smart, but if I was him, I would come after Young. I I would try to shut down the running game. I would put the heat on him, Young. And if you watch the spring game, someone has time. Two things I, I know from studying quarterbacks. The two biggest mistakes quarterbacks make is they throw the ball too late. He doesn't do that. Usually delivers the ball on time. Or they they when they see pressure, they start rolling right and they start bailing and he does bail a little bit he's not going to step up most times and and deliver the throw now maybe he's gotten a little bit better in these couple weeks in fall camp but you know no one's seen that and I think he can be had you know I I think his supporting cast is great they have three two guys Robinson and another guy These, these guys are talented I mean they're not as talented, though, as the running back they lost last year, Harris, and the two stud receivers, so Waddle and Smith. So Mitch, Mitch is good, and they have some other talented guys. Their defense is <laughs> – I mean, their defensive line, front seven, is going to be the best that we're going to go against all year. And I'm a Miami fan, grew up a Miami fan. My dad was one of the team dentists with Miami for many years, so been on the sidelines, and I'm rooting for him. Uh, I've gone against Miami. I've made a lot of money, unfortunately, and it kills me to go against Miami. But I really see this as a seven to ten point game going into the fourth quarter. Where what, what's going to happen from that point going forward? I, I don't really know. I don't know if we have the depth and if we can hold on. But I'll take the nineteen points. That's what I'm seeing most places. I can All see right, so something like a, a thirty-five seventeen final. The the angle of being a fan. Yeah. And I think that's a that's a great point you're making, and I think it applies to everybody that's watching this show right now. We're all fans, and right. but if you can't you can't be a fan when you're betting. And you said that there have been times that you've bet against Miami, even though you've grown up a Miami fan and lived in Miami your whole life. How do, does somebody detach from fandom to common sense when they're making a wager? It's a business, so. I have a, a wife and two daughters that are 22 and 24. And when you're putting them through college and one went to Miami, she was actually a cheerleader. The other went to an art school and she's in New York city and, and I'm footing the bill until she gets going. So um, you just have to do it. You know, you just have to sit there and watch tape and detach yourself from, you know, your feelings and what I like Miami to do great, but you know, it's killed me. I mean, there's been some people in the Miami program that have asked me higher up, you know, they've seen me at the gym and they're like, you know, why are you picking against Miami this week? I'm like, well, you're not there yet. You know, this is a few years ago. So do I see some positive things? Absolutely. I mean, last year at the end of the year, I mean, it was the same old, 
you know, and that's why Manny made the change at, at defensive coordinator. I think he wants to be more involved. I mean, there's some negatives. I mean, Miami has still not stopped a good offense since maybe 2005, 2006. They've beaten some good teams. They beat Notre Dame. And what was that, 2000 and what was that? 17. Okay. But Notre Dame's offense was not good. No. That was not a good offense. So – They've beaten some some decent teams and some good teams, but they really have not gone against as talented an offense as this. And and I think it's going to be a nice measuring stick. I mean, there's some things I like a lot. I think defensive backfield's getting better and better. Do I like DJ Ivy at cornerback starting? No, I don't think he has good ball skills. Uh, do I think that Nesta should be further along? He should be dominating at this point. Yes, but um, I think they're going to be up to the challenge. And sometimes. When you see such a negative performance, like what happened against North Carolina, kids the whole offseason, they don't want to be embarrassed again. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think Miami's going to come to play. I think our receivers and our skilled players can do some damage. Two, three years ago, our line couldn't match up at all. I think it's going to be a nice challenge. You know, the, the sad part is if we get blown out, the fan base is going to be, you know, distraught. And they're going to be hurling things at, at anyone they can they can throw things at, and that's a frustrating thing because if they lose big, a lot of people are going to say the season's done, and and they might only have thirty thirty five thousand in a game from that point going forward. But there's enough positives, you know, in the receiving core, the line, um, you know, getting King back, his experience. Um, just a better coaching staff, you know, recruiting and coaching these kids. It seemed like a few years ago that we either, if we got a coach, he could either recruit or he could coach. Now it seems like almost every one of the coaches can do both, and that's important. So we're also catching Bama off having two perfect coordinators. Uh, now with Bill O'Brien taking over, may not be the perfect fit. So it's about catching sometimes teams at the right time. And if they can keep it close, and I, I like I said, I can see a 35-17, maybe even 35-24, 35-25 final. I think that I think the the fan base would be energized by seeing that and seeing us go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alabama, the best of the best. And it would certainly help recruits because there's just too many guys, kids leaving to go other places. And and trust me. Uh, I'm there, and I and and I've gone to a bunch of these schools. I go to a lot of spring games, not the last two years because of COVID, and their facilities are great. But I can tell you this firsthand: my daughter got an incredible education at Miami, and I know a lot of these kids are all they all think that they're going to the NFL. But if you get an education at Miami, my daughter was an Iron Arrow, and she worked her butt off, and there's, there was companies coming after her left and right. And that education, having a class, you know, size of 15 and professors that really want to work for you, they want you to succeed. You're not just a number. I think that's important. And I think staying home here in Miami, you know, when the, when the stadium is full, it's not the Orange Bowl, but the Virginia Tech and Notre Dame games, those were some pretty impressive crowds. crowds. They were right up there. So, um, this game is, I hate to say it, 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 it could make or break their season. All right. So a couple of angles that I've seen, um, and you, you talked about Bryce Young and watching their spring game and looking for little clues in that to, to help you figure out which way to go in this game. I think you're spot on about what Manny Diaz is going to do defensively. I mean, he, he's not sitting there with an undersized defensive line, an undersized linebacker core. They don't match up in any way, shape, or form with the line of scrimmage with Alabama. He's not going to sit there and get his butt kicked. I don't I don't right. believe. I, I think he's going to take chances. I think he's going to be stunting the linemen like crazy. I, I think he's he's going to be blitzing from all over the place. I think Alabama's yeah. going to see more blitzes in one game than they've ever seen in their life. And I think he's yeah. going to try to speed the game up for Bryce Young and, and rattle them and, and just get his mind racing. Uh, right. Your thoughts on that? I agree. If, if I'm Alabama, the play that might be the most successful play for them is running screen passes because I think Miami's – they're going to bring five guys almost every single play. If it's – the key is get that – get that – get that, you know, first down play 
get them in a lost situation where they lose two, three yards. They're running that, you know, their their power sweep or they're running a play that that that's their bread and butter. Hold them to no gain or one or two yards, and that puts them in a different situation. They're used to gaining six and eight yards on these teams, and I, I don't like the, the game plans I've seen from some, most of these teams. Like, like you watch some of these teams that, that played them, and I'm like, what are they doing? Like, Ohio State had no game plan. Um, I think it was Notre Dame played them in the semifinal. Come up with something. You know, I thought Miami, when they played Clemson, I thought we were going to play with them. A couple things happened in that game. I think we had a good game plan to start off the game. We jumped off sides, fourth and four, fourth and five, and ended up going from a forced punt situation into them scoring a touchdown. And then we did a double pass that I think we completed but didn't go for a touchdown because he threw it behind him or something. You know, those two plays and then the rain, once you, once you fall behind by 14, 17 points against a good team, like Clemson, you're pretty much done. But, you know, those things change, and we're up 7 nothing in that game. That game could have been a different game, you know. Uh, so I, I think it's in Manny and this coaching staff to come up with it. Even the, if you go back to the Florida game a couple of years ago, and I did not like Tandy Notes at all as a coordinator, but you look at the first quarter, his game plan against Florida, the plays that he called were fabulous. If you have that much time to prepare for a team, and even Dan Enos did it, against Florida, I just think that our offensive staff can come up and find 15, 18, 20 plays at work. Now, you might have trouble in the second half once you start replicating those plays. Great players, once they've seen those plays a second time or they've seen the best that you have, they can make adjustments. But, you know, just like Miami, when we beat Nebraska in 83, we had about 20, 25 plays that Nebraska couldn't stop. And I still think great offensive talent um, can beat a really good defense. And and if they can execute, they can make an inch. They could go into the half with a lead. All right. So we here at Kingsport decided we, we want to have the least Sterling experience. And and we went into the, we went into the cave, so to speak, and we started looking at some tape. And we think we uncovered a weakness in Alabama's defense that Miami could exploit. And that is the passing game and isolating their linebackers in single coverage by using formations and personnel. And right. the, the teams that were successful against them last year were able to hit big plays uh, and, and catch those linebackers in that single coverage. I think that's going to be a huge part of Rhett Lashley's game plan on Saturday. I think that to make you a genius, they're going to have to hit some of those and maybe get two, three touchdowns by buying some of those plays. Like you said, it, it, once they do it, it might get a little more difficult uh, because that, you got to figure Alabama will make some adjustments. But when they do adjust, Lee, I think Miami has enough weapons on offense to maybe exploit some of those other things a little bit. So I'll be very disappointed if Miami doesn't move the ball in, a, a little bit in this game and doesn't put some points on the board uh, because I think they have enough talent on offense to do so. So I think you're talking about the Ole Miss game from last year. Yes, sir. And Ole Miss did a number on them. I mean, I they had them on their heels. Yep. So, so if you watch enough tape, yep, you can you can find weaknesses in anyone. And and I think, are they a great defense? Yeah, they're going to be one of the top five defenses in the country. But uh, a good offensive coordinator, if you have a quarterback, the reason we couldn't compete in the last 15 years until last year on a consistent basis, we didn't have a quarterback. You know, we weren't putting guys at the next level. I'm not saying – King's going to be an NFL quarterback. But if you're a real good college quarterback, changes a lot of things. It masks oh, yeah. a lot of weaknesses. I mean, look at AM. Were they a great team when they beat Alabama? No. But Johnny Football could run and throw the football, couldn't yeah. stop them. So that's why Miami has a chance. That's why AM, AM, they they ended up going with a, uh, a kid that is a mobile kid instead of more of the passer because they realize once they get to, I think it's game six. And they play Alabama, and if you got a guy that can only throw the football, he can't move around back there, you're not going to beat him. Well, I think King was responsible for at least three victories last year. I think he was the difference between winning five and winning eight last season. So uh, he's showing no signs of his ACL surgery. He's looked great in fall camp, very consistent. I mean, every single time we watched him, I didn't see a flaw. I mean, the kid is just pure money. He's a great leader. 
So I think this is his moment. I think this is the the stage that he's been waiting his entire life for. And this is his chance to, you know, right. int- not introduce himself because people know who he is, but to show the level of player that he is. All right, Lee. So just to be clear for everybody, whether we don't know if the line's going to land at 18, 19, probably somewhere in there. You're taking Miami in the points? Taking Miami in the points. I'm going to predict the 35-24 Alabama final. But uh wouldn't shock me. Like I said, we have a 7-10 point game going to the final corner. That happens. Anything can happen here. All right. And uh, the over-under uh, right now in this game, um, do, you, do, you, do you know what that is? Yeah, I can tell you right now. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. No, no, it's all right. I can tell you I was going to hit you with that question, but I think it's significant for people. Yeah, it's at uh, 61 right now. Okay. The so line just moved, in fact, as we're talking, up to 19 and a half most places. So um, 61's, you know, a tough, you know, I said 35, 24, <laughs> um, 59 points. So I think the game is a little bit easier to, to tackle than the total. Yeah, that's a tough. That's a tough. If you had, if you if you had a bet the total, do you have an opinion? Probably over. Probably over. So yeah. a lot of points. You think a lot of points are in store for opening day at Mercedes Benz Stadium? All right. So that's Miami. Uh, I want to ask you about a couple other games, but I think uh, the the people out there that are betting it's the beginning of the season, and they also are trying to reconcile the over under, which for Miami has been set at nine point five. Um, your opinion on the over-under for Miami? I think they probably win nine games. That's what I think. Yeah. I think yeah. it's tough. You know, I didn't – I didn't. I, I think I have four or five college wagers, m- more in the NFL. I think it's right there. You know, everything goes right. You know, we win probably 10 games. I can't see us winning 11 games. I really can't. No, no, I mean, no. we're – we're going to have a game or two where we just slip and fall. We don't have we don't have that overwhelming a talent, and no. um, I don't think we're consistent enough to put three or four real, real good games together. So, and it's really only because good. of the offense. It's because of the quality of the offense that I think you're even saying that. Um, yeah. Because there's just, there's some challenges on defense um, and teams. Oh, if, that- if we lost like our middle linebacker Bradley Jennings had to play. We're in deep trouble. I don't know if you've ever watched cut-ups of the guy. He's a non-player. I mean, I watch guys in junior college, and he started 11 games last year. He had 39 tackles. Gary, I could play middle linebacker for Miami at 58 years old at 215 pounds, and I could just fall, fall down half the time, and guys are going to trip over, and you're going to get 30, 35 tackles. Oh he took goodness. the wrong angle on – I mean, there were sometimes five, six, seven plays in a row. So we just don't have the depth at some positions, you know, uh, know. At, at linebacker right now. That's a, and, and it's shocking that with so much talent that we've had some years recruiting that we couldn't find certain positions. Like, we should always be stacked at receiver, linebacker, and defensive back and running back consistently. I mean, it should shouldn't ever be a problem. Now, you know, getting getting offensive linemen. You know, there's the the the, the word is you know there's not a consistent stable of guys to recruit down here. Great offensive linemen. So, I can I can see us being inconsistent in that area. But, I mean, there's last year our receivers were terrible. I I I, I agree with you. All right, so. Um... The over under, you, you, you know, your, your advice would probably be the under. I, I think I agree. With no, you no, the over, the over, the over, the over. No, you're talking about the over under is nine point five. Oh, oh yeah, on, on the so, season. Yeah, I, I would, I would, I would yeah. predict we. I mean, would it be disastrous to lose four games and go eight and four? Yeah, not really. Wouldn't it? Yeah, wouldn't right. shock me. I mean, I could still see it. You know, I'm looking for positive signs. We're not yeah, just looking at records. Another looking for positive agency. signs. We're looking for progress. We're looking yeah. for a team to be well coached, um, to be disciplined. You know, it, it's it's not just you know we might get a couple teams out of nowhere that are that are great teams. We could also, on the other hand, North Carolina. Could, you know, they could be nothing special. You know, everyone's been anointed them. You know, it's outside of Clemson, second best team in the conference. Outside of the quarterback, they got weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see how they show up this week as well. They got 
the game at Virginia Tech. So that's a great one to evaluate North Carolina on open day. All right. Um, I wanted to ask you about a couple other games. You've got Florida State starting the season against Notre Dame. Your thoughts on that game? So the Irish are really depleted. They only returned nine starters. I, you know, with, with so many guys – this year returning almost every team's returning like 17 starters on average it's crazy they only return nine they had nine guys drafted some big time losses i don't love the florida state team but i think mckenzie milton is going to be able to run around and make some plays they really hit the transfer portal heavy and they needed to they brought in this kid andrew parchment from kansas who's a player um jermaine johnson from georgia defensive end He'll start right away. He's he's a big time player. I think he was in the number one junior college recruit at the time. And and then uh, linebacker from South Carolina, Thomas, uh, can make plays. Uh, who else? Oh, they also got the the uh, right guard from from Notre Dame. So they actually will know Notre Dame's system pretty well. But um, I, I Cone is the 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 kid that's going to take over for Notre Dame. A quarterback used to be. At Wisconsin doesn't impress me a whole lot. I this is a really down Notre Dame team. So they've got to play actually 12 teams that have potential, not 12 teams that will, but potential to make a bowl here. So uh they Notre Dame also lost four of the top five offensive linemen from last year. I think Notre Dame wins something like 30 to 27, but I can see um Milton just keeping them competitive. I just think he's a winner. Do I think he's gonna be as good as he once was? No. But and they have a lot of holes on defense. They 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 don't have a whole lot of talent. But what's I think it'll be a competitive line? game. What's the line in that game? It's seven and a half. Notre Dame's a seven and a half point favorite. So take so Florida State. Yeah, and the I mean, I mean, on the road you're going to lay seven and a half um, with a team with a brand brand new quarterback and team, and they also have a, a new coordinator. They lost their coordinator. Uh, he left, but they did make a nice pickup. They picked up the coordinator from from Cincinnati. Um, did Notre Dame. So that's not such a such a big loss. Okay, give us a couple other games this week for people to, to look at. Okay, so I think I'm going to go with Michigan State here, plus three, three and a half. We face Michigan State in a couple weeks. They're facing Northwestern. Northwestern, uh, a couple years ago, they were horrific on offense. The quarterback was Hunter Johnson. Remember him? He used to be at at Clemson, he was highly touted. They thought he was the guy that was going to take over for Trevor Lawrence. He transferred out. He is just not good at all. They also were decimated with graduation. Uh, Michigan State, uh, I think, is going to going to retool. They also hit the transfer portal, so they got Anthony Russo, kid from Temple, uh, running back Kenneth Walker, the top running back at Wake Forest. He transferred in. Um, also got. Um, couple other kids uh, from Tennessee and Florida, two defensive backs from Florida. So uh, 16 and two, the visitor is against the spread in the series. I I, I don't want to lay points. Northwestern is one of the greatest teams with Fitzgerald as an underdog. Great. I mean, it's scary how good he is, but as a favorite, he's the other way. He's terrible. Give me Michigan State plus to three to three and a half. That's a game on Friday night. You know, we're going to be playing them in a couple weeks. Um, Miami fans want to watch. I, I think Michigan State pulls that off. And you probably want to root for Michigan State because if Michigan State fares well, looks better if Miami beats them. All right. Uh, do you have any others? Or is that it? Yeah. Give you two more. So two I, like more. Yeah. I, I like Clemson against Georgia, another ACC team. The public loves Georgia. I don't like Kirby Smart at all in big games. I don't like his, his coordinator. I don't like Todd Monk, and I don't think he calls a good game. I don't think they have any receivers that that would probably even be in the two deep at Clemson. So Clemson had a bunch of injuries last year, receiver position. They got four guys that go 6'3", 6'3", 6'3", and 6'4", that can run like the wind and probably take a quarter off the top of a backboard. Clemson's receivers are scary good. And how about this? The last time Dabo... Lost two games. He went 15-0. and 0. They're, my, they're my favorite to win it all. A lot of people like really? Alabama. I think Alabama's going to lose two games this year. I like wow. Clemson a lot there. Um, just don't think that Georgia and JT Daniels and that coaching staff are who, who I want to back. And here's another game with, with Miami ties. 
Um, I like BYU in a neutral site game laying 12 against Arizona. So Jed Fish is the coach at Arizona. Yeah. Who's who's their, their offensive coordinator? Brendan Carroll. And I was never a big fan of both those guys. Come on. I didn't realize that. He made Brendan Carroll his offensive coordinator? Wow. It's all about who, it's all about who you know, Gary. <laughs> wow. And how about this? His defensive coordinator is the embattled Don Brown, the defensive coordinator from Michigan, from Michigan who yeah. their defense the last couple of years fell apart. So they had to go on the cheap there. Remember, they had to pay off Sumlin. Sumlin, after I think the first year, ever wherever he is, AM and Arizona, they would just throw money at him to get extensions and then he would flop. They had, they lost 12 straight games. And I know, you know, you, you got Zach Wilson leaving B, BYU, but they have a system there, and they're the kids are winners. They have some kids um, that can get exposed on the back seven, but I don't think Arizona has that passing game. Listen to their two quarterbacks' names: Gunner Cruz. Oh, here's another thing: they decided they're going to do rotate two quarterbacks. At least that's what they're saying. Gunner, I like that Gunner Cruz, great name, but him and Will Plummer, a freshman, are going to rotate. I just don't believe in these guys. I, I think BYU wins that wins that game something like 35-17. All right. And then um of course the uh uh the other thing I should ask you is uh in in terms of Notre Dame, I thought you made some great points and gave some great insight on that. Um the, the question would be what's the over under with Notre Dame for the season? Do you, do you know what that is? And, I don't know it offhand. I think it was like nine, nine and a half, something like that. Um, yeah, so, so so you would probably recommend the under on that one. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I think they're going to have a tough year. So. All right, Lee, well, that's going to do it, I think, for today. I mean, I think you got you gave everybody enough to chew on for, for, for one week, and uh, we'll see what happens up there in Atlanta on Saturday, and then we'll be back next week with a new You Bet King Sport as we look ahead to the Miami Appalachian State game and other top games in college football. So um, real quick, we've had it scrolling across the bottom of the screen. If people want to subscribe to your service at Paramount Sports, what do they do? Let's go to the website, ParamountSports.com. You can sign up for the season, sign up for a month, or just try us for a week. I think I have a special going this week, nine games, $97, all college football games. It's an instant download. So like I said, I'm not going to win every game or, or every <laughs> week, but we'll generally win three out of every four weeks, and, and we'll generally, generally hit – 57, 58 percent, and that'll that'll make you a lot of money. So uh, do things the right way, and and give you my best effort. And if you ever need me, you can call that number on the bottom of the screen, 800-400-9741. I'll probably answer it even sometimes as late as one or two in the morning. Wow, uh, I didn't know eight hundred numbers even still existed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they still I, exist. I mean, I've got a local number, but I, I got such a good number, you know, you got to keep giving it out, and. Yeah. Um, just to, I just told you days, we used to do recruiting information on 800 lines. <laughs> right, we right. Started Kings for it, but, uh, yeah. All right, Lee, well, thank you so much for your Thanks, time Gary. this week. I'm sure everybody enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next week. For Lee okay. Sterling, I'm Gary Furman. Thank you for joining us on You Bet Kingsport. We'll see you next week, everybody.